Hey guys, what's up? This is Don. And hey guys, what's up? This is Don for Video Fort, and uh, welcome to another Cinema 4D and uh, After Effects tutorial. And uh, today I am going to be showing you how to create this uh, medical animation. Um, the idea here was to try and recreate like a um, synapse uh, or neuron effect. I don't know which which of those I'm uh, I'm thinking of, but essentially this kind of thing, you know, it's like a close up of you know what's happening in someone's brain or something. I don't know. And um, you know, you have this sort of cell with these tentacles, and you have these neurons being uh, being fired, and then it looks uh, it looks kind of cool, right? So, um, inside of Cinema 4D, this is uh, what the scene looks like. So, as you can see, it's not very complex at all. Uh, we have a few objects over here, and uh, only one texture being used. So, this shouldn't be too hard to set up. Okay, the process in Cinema 4D starts with a Playtonic. And then I'm going to hit C on this to make it uh, editable. Go to polygon mode, press Ctrl A to select all of the polys, and then right click extrude inner. And uh, I want to make sure preserve groups is not ticked. Uh, that way, this will extrude inner individually. I'm just going to hit apply with an offset of 10, and uh, this is what I get. And then I'm going to right click, go to matrix extrude. And by default, it should look something like this. If you just hit apply, um, you get this sort of tentacles uh, coming from those polygons that we had selected. Let me go back to modeling mode and let's drop this into a sub div surface so it looks smoother. Uh, I need to go to the Platonic here. Go to Cinema 4D tags and get the font tag so that the surfaces um, look more rounded. Okay, um, I'm going to drop this whole thing into a cloner. So let's get a cloner and uh, drop this in here. And I want to go to the mode and set this to grid array. Uh, 3 by 3 is fine and the size is going to be 2000 by 2000 by 2000. So we have a load of them uh, in this grid formation. I'm going to go to more graph, st still with the cloner selected, and get the random effector. And I just want to offset the position by 500 in the three different directions. And this randomizes the position so that it doesn't look uniform. And uh, I can also go to the rotation and uh, do the same, just to put in some random values in here to get a different look. Uh, all around and uh, we can actually quickly go ahead and just do our camera animation and then we'll work on creating uh, the look so let me first of all go to my render settings and I want to go to the output section and set the film aspect to uh, Panavision which is like a super wide um, ratio and I will set the frame rate to 24 whilst I'm here. Uh, the width is going to be 1280. And uh, this is uh, this is what I'm going to output as later on. Okay, um, I can get my camera. Let's uh, look through this. And I'm going to go to the object tab and set the focal length to 50. Um, just because I prefer... Uh, how that falls off into the into the background. Let me find a good place to frame one of these cells in the center of the frame. Okay, so something like this, you know, where I just have one of these in the center and then a good amount either side and in the background. This uh, this should work. I can set the first keyframe and then let's uh, go to the end of the animation. Let me extend this to 6 seconds instead of 3. And uh, let's go to the end 
and I'm just gonna zoom out slightly and then set another keyframe and actually let me start off much closer uh, to this particular cell and it should look something like this just a simple pushback and uh, maybe we can add some rotation to that as well so something like this and let me get both of these keyframes and make them linear so that the speed stays con uh, constant the, the entire time. Okay, once I have uh, you know the scene and the animation created, I can focus on just creating the look and the texturing of the particle. That's probably going to be the hardest section of this whole uh, uh, this whole tutorial. So first of all, I am going to disable the cloner just so we are left with this one clone in the center of our scene and uh, this is what we're going to be using as preview so I'm gonna create a new texture and let's go to the color uh, let me just uh, have this showing also and uh, we just want to make this like a dark blue color so something like this maybe maybe less saturated let's uh, disable specular for for now and go to the luminance channel and this is where you're gonna get that sort of pulsing effect happening so to do this um, I need to go to gradient let's uh, jump in here and set the type of the gradient to be uh, 3d spherical let me uh, move this Y point all the way to right next to the first other point, the, the black one. And let me create another point. So we have this line just like this. And uh, the way you animate this is quite simple. We need to set a keyframe initially. Let's move forward 30 frames. And we just need to move these toward the other side. Like this and then I can hit uh, keyframe and so what we have is this expanding circle right this sort of band just going outward and because of the type of projection we have used this uh, 3d spherical mode when I place this onto the object it's gonna look something like this now you can see that we have too many of them. We only want one of these bands on each uh, tentacle at any given moment. We don't want, you know, two, three or four. Okay, so to fix this issue where, you know, you have these bands, uh, a lot of them, you only want one. Uh, we need to go to the radius. Uh, first of all, let's change where this starts. I can tell that it's starting here it should be starting somewhere inside the sphere so i need to change this movement which for some reason is set to default of minus 100. let's set this to zero so that all of the motion originates from the center of the object and then to get rid of all these other rings i need to increase the radius so i just need to go to the last frame first of all and this is going to show us how large this radius needs to be. You just uh, keep pushing it until, you know, this white tip disappears from the, from the model. So somewhere around here seems to be the right value, 460. And this is what I get. Okay, um, let's make this a different color. So if I go back to frame zero, I'm going to get the white um, handle there and let me make it a kind of red color like this and uh, I have to control and click that again to save that keyframe go to frame 30 and uh, just do the same thing and then save the keyframe so we have this color instead so I am getting something like this still uh, inside of this texture we need to add some more layers 
I'm gonna go back to luminance and in this first section I want to go to the texture and uh, layer this so we have uh, the ability to have more layers I'm gonna go to shader and Fresnel and I'm gonna set this color to this kind of blue let's make it the same hue as uh, the blue that we started off with so 220 and then I'll hit OK if I go and render this you see how this looks this material needs to be darker definitely let's have a brightness of maybe 5 OK and I can go back in here let's say uh, duplicate this for now so copy channel shader and paste and this is going to have half the saturation so about 50 so that it's a uh, whiter basically and it's also going to be smaller and i will set this blending mode to be screen so that it just overlays on top of the old one so we have this lighter edge uh, on the outside our gradient needs to be above both of these with a screen overlay or maybe in between the two of them. When it's in a layer, it's going to look a little bit funny in your preview, but when you render, it's uh, it's fine still. The last step is to go to the bump section and get some noise. I want to go in here and change the noise type to FBM and then only have two octaves and then change the space to be UV 2D and I get this look and uh, that's essentially how you create the texture setup for this whole thing so the whole look and even the pulse effect is driven entirely inside of one material okay so I can close this let me jump back into my camera and let me re-enable the cloner and I'm gonna end up with something like this a bunch of these in the in the scene I wanna go to my render settings and enable depth of field and if I jump out of the camera let's have it focus uh, on this one object so let me put the focus point on that and I want to go to the detail section and only map rear blur. Let's say I jump back and if I render the background is going to be blurred out so we isolate just this, uh, this cell here and I really like how that looks. Okay, um, you will notice that our pulse animation it only works you know just the once so between frame 0 and 30 we get the pulse animation and then nothing for the rest um, what you have to do is repeat the keyframes and uh, there's a way to do this if I go to uh, window and timeline I can select the gradient keyframes and then in the properties here there's a before and after control I want to have this as a repeat and then just bump up the repetitions so as long as this is higher than the length of your animation then we're constantly going to get the thing animating and uh, again you won't see this in the preview so you just have to render and then see it uh, see it work okay so when you've done your render uh, you can bring it into after effects and this is the render which I did when I was uh, testing the effect. Um, you can see that it's pretty much the same as the what we've just created. I think the tentacles are slightly longer, but uh, that's it. In After Effects, all I did was um, a few adjustments. So I added some uh, glow and then just uh, desaturated the whole thing slightly and then added some noise uh, on top of it and that gave me this look as you can see nothing uh, too complex you know this whole thing from start to finish should uh, take you minutes and uh, you know that's all I wanted to show you just the techniques involved in uh, 
getting the look and also creating the pulse animation uh, you know take that with you and then use it to create you know something more complex maybe and uh, see if you can add your own twist to it so thank you for watching i hope you found this helpful and i will see you next time bye